Protesters in Sudan are demanding the resignation of the interim government. Divisions are widening between the military and civilian leaders. So could this affect the transition into democratic rule? And what's the way out of this crisis? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme today with me, Peter Dobby. Sudan has been led by a government made up of both civilian and military leaders for more than two years now. But tension has risen between those in charge of steering the country towards elections under a 2019 power-sharing deal. That involves the forces of freedom and change, a civilian coalition which led the protest against the long-time leader Omar al-Bashir. Now, a faction of that group is demanding a bigger representation in the transitional government. Its supporters held anti-government protests on Saturday, while those who back the military have called on the generals to take control of the country. And thousands are holding a sit-in in front of the presidential palace in Khartoum. Sudan's prime minister has warned his nation is facing its worst political crisis in recent years. <laughs> I would not be exaggerating if I said this political crisis is the worst and most dangerous crisis that threatens the transition and even threatens our entire country and warns of a terrible evil. This is due to the deep splits among civilians and among the military, as well as between the civilians and the military. OK, we'll get to our guest in just a moment. First, Heber Morgan in Khartoum sets up our discussion. The sit-in in front of the presidential palace in Sudan's capital, Khartoum, is now in third day, with protesters demanding Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok dissolve the executive cabinet and form one that they say should be more representative of those who took part in the revolution in December 2018. Now, thousands gathered in front of the presidential palace here in the capital, Khartoum, but today, a few hundred of those protesters that you can see went up to the prime minister's office as an emergency cabinet meeting was held to try to force him and put pressure on him to dissolve that cabinet that he's meeting with. Now, those who call for this sit-in and these protests are the forces of freedom and change coalition, but that's a subset of the mainstream coalition that led protests against former president Omar al-Bashir. Those new coalition, the new forces of freedom and change, say that they're not represented in the government despite the fact that they took part in the revolution. Now, the issue of representation is not just an issue here. In the East, there are protesters who've been blocking the port for more than a month, saying that the Juba peace agreement that was signed in October last year in the South Sudanese capital, Juba, is not representative, and they're demanding the government cancel that and start new negotiations for a peace agreement that has something to do with the East. Now, Sudan is a country with many ethnicities, many tribes, and many coalitions, many of them that have taken part in the December 2018 revolution, but many who say that they're not represented in that, uh, in this current transitional government. Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok has described this current crisis as the most dangerous to Sudan's transition and to the country and has called on all sides to dialogue. But so far, that is yet to happen. Hiba Morgan, Khartoum, for Inside Story. Well, tensions between the military and civilian sides of Sudan's government, they have increased since last month's attempted coup. The military leaders have been demanding reforms to the Forces of Freedom and Change Coalition. They've also called for the replacement of the cabinet. Support for the transitional government has dropped in recent months after it slashed fuel subsidies and then inflation soared. While those who back the civilian leadership have accused the armed forces of wanting to take back control. OK, let's bring in our guests. Today joining us from Khartoum is Mubarak Ardol, chair of the Political Bureau for the Democratic Alliance for Social Justice here in Doha. We have Walid Madibo, president of the Sudan Policy Forum, and also in Khartoum, Hajjouj Kuka, a member of the Girifana, a non-violent resistance movement, and also he's an award-winning filmmaker. Gentlemen, a warm welcome to you all. Mubarak Ardol in Khartoum, coming to you first. Mr Hamdok is describing what's going on in Sudan as one of the worst crises they've had in years. But is he part of the problem, not part of the solution? Let me greet your uh, guest, Mr Walid and Mr Hajjouj. And uh, I, wish, I would like to, to wish them all the best and all the best for our Sudanese and the movement of Sudan 
for democratic transformation and for our revolution. Actually, the problem here in Sudan is yeah, one of the big problems we are facing. We describe it as it is uh, easy to be solved and easy to be addressed. The people can sit in together, the parties to the conflict, especially the, the people who hijacked the government of the revolution, whom are now on the screen taking the government from the Supreme Council to the Council of Ministries and to the regions. They have to sit and discuss with others to expand the participation of the government, to bring others to the government, to expand the participation socially and politically in order to avoid the country from going into dark, dark era. The, okay, the Mubarak, country, just let me pause you there and put that point to Walid Madibo here in Doha. Walid Madibo, if the country is to expand politically, if that's a solution, that means getting more people involved in a process. But at the moment, we understand the military is not united, the civilian administration is not united. So with that as a backstory, how do you bring more people into the process? I can understand the sense of uh, frustration of the Sudanese people with the forces of freedom and change, at least the earlier version because uh, in a way they have been manipulating the General Assembly, the Central Council and the Executive Office. However, uh, I can't understand how dissolving the government can help resolve uh, the situation because if there is any failure, it is the failure of both uh, the Sovereign Council and uh, the Prime Minister's Office. Uh, when we speak about uh, expand uh, being more inclusive, representative. Uh, I, I think we should think about ways by which we can make the process of negotiation within the forces of freedom and change more democratic and more uh, uh, inclusive. Uh, the, the, that can be uh, that can be achieved by uh, getting engaged in deliberative uh, sessions uh, that. Uh, put uh, the higher strategic objective into sight. The, the higher strategic objective is ensuring that this transition is successful because otherwise, if it's not successful, we are going to get into uh, going to get back into areas of authoritarianism and totalitarianism. Okay. Imagine if when we, when we speak about expanding the government, be, be more inclusive. We have to speak about the legislative body. We have to speak about the commissions. We have to speak about the sector security uh, reform. We cannot simply speak about the prime minister's office because all in all, there are at least 26 ministers. We can all be included in, in, the, in the council of the prime minister's office. But we can we can get included in other forms of the government. Understood. Uh, okay. Uh, Hajj Judge Cooker in Khartoum <laughs> as well. Hajj Judge, the people you speak for and the people you speak to, how unified are they? Let's let's talk about the urgency of the moment. Right now we're talking because there's something very urgent. There's protests. There's a sit-in right now in the street that does not represent the revolution. That does not look like anything that we were in the revolution. When the youth go to the sit-in, they're not welcome there because it's a sit-in that's very obvious, orchestrated by uh, uh, some rebel groups, uh, some uh, national security officers. It's just a really weird looking uh, sit-in where there's tents, there's food being delivered. So it's something that not, never looked like a revolution and it's right in front of the palace, a place that we could never reach. So this is a sit-in that definitely is okayed by the military by uh, Burhan and by Himeti. And this is our problem. The real problem, and this is what we as revolutionary look, look at, is that we see this as handing over power and to the military. Our revolution was against two things, against the Islamic dictatorship that was running and the military. It was a military Islamic dictatorship. So now the Kazan, they're out of the picture, but the military was supposed to hand over the chairmanship uh, to the civilians very soon. And now, with this timely 
sit in with this timely attack on the government, it's a way for not handing over to civilians. So what we're out in the street is not to stop a democratic um, and more people getting into a more diverse people in the government and all that. It is actually to stop the military from taking power. So when people are going out on the 21st, it is to stop people from giving over powers, to stop Mubarak Ardul, to stop uh, the Minister of uh, Economy, and to stop uh, Minni Minawi. And all these people are people into government. I'm actually really disappointed at Mubarak Ardul, who I considered a friend and a comrade in the revolution. And uh, out of everybody, he's, he was very, he's been very close to the street. So it's really baffling to me how he thinks, although he is in government, he's in a really high position in government, uh, and how does he think that he needs to change and this is the right time. I feel like this is not the right time for what, what he's doing and it's not the right way to attack and change the government. Government needs to be changed from inside and he is inside, but to hand over the government to military rule and go back to dictatorship is, is surprising and it, it is exactly what we're fighting. Is okay. We're fighting the military from going back. Okay, Mubarak Ardol there in Khartoum as well. I'm assuming that you want or you need to have good relations with the military. But there are people looking in on your country saying the military will never relinquish what they've got at the moment because they're worried that at some point they will be held accountable. Uh, let me just uh, try to remind our colleague Hajjuj that we are coming from different backgrounds. OK, Mubarak, can I just pause you there for a second, sir? It's quite a short programme. Could you just answer the question, please? Uh, the revolutionaries, you don't need to describe them or to give them tickets so that to be revolutionaries. They are coming from different backgrounds. They are coming from different areas. They have one demand, and we are in semi-democratic era. Everyone will address his issues. So you don't need to say they are a rebel group. They are part of the peace uh, G JPA, Juba Peace Agreement, they signed, they came here, and part of them are political movements. And now we are having a serious problem of, of a democratic constitution or the democratic issues related to the government. The, 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 the military relations is, is described in the constitutional document. We don't need to give them more than what they have. And it is not issue of relinquishment, it is issue of having their right and to keep our uh, relation with them according to the document that we signed. You know, Sudan is in a, in a, in a region that facing some stability problems, security and uh, political instability. There is Ethiopia, and there is a peace, a fragile peace in South Sudan, and there is a problem in our western side of uh, the country, in Chad and others. We don't need to take the country uh, in escalation and to take it uh, to in a bad the relation between the military and the civilians. Until we face the problem of instability, then it will create issues of migration, it will increase the migrants and other problems. We'll go back to the era of Bashir. The military, they have to work with the civilian in a partnership, in a good relation, until we end the era of the, tra the transitional period, until we enter the democratic era. And this one will require us to go for uh, serious measures of, uh, of uh, democratization. Okay, okay. Mubarak uh, Adol, just let me uh, the boil census. those points down if I can and put those to Walid Madibo here in Doha. Walid Madibo, um, the military is also making demands. What's the difference between the military making its own demands of the civilian part of the administration or indeed of the people of the country? What's the difference between that and the military basically staging a power grab? If, if you look at the situation now, uh, they keep, uh, the, the military officers, uh, they keep uh, accusing the civilian uh, government of, uh, of failure. But it's uh, the, the army itself uh, has been in charge of four-fifths of that failure. They have, they have been obstructing uh, the file of uh, justice. Uh, they took care of the peace agreement, uh, which included some asymmetrical arrangement that is causing a lot of trouble now, uh, mainly the situation in Eastern Sudan. Uh, they, ha they had the file of foreign affairs. They went ahead without the consulting the Sudanese people and tried normalizing relationship with Israel. Uh, they uh, they refused uh, 
to bring uh, uh, to, to to bring into accountability the the companies that they have been administering for almost three decades. So what what I see here, Peter, uh, there is the, the if uh, I agree with uh, Comrade Ardur in the sense that given the situation of political and military instability, I don't see a problem with uh, Burhan, uh, the president, uh, continuing even to finish the, the whole period of the transition, provided that they can give the civilians back the files uh, that, uh, that, 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 uh, uh, that's the, that should be under the discretion of uh, Hamdouk in the very fairest place. So in the case, the deadlock here is, is being caused by two things, uh, Mr. Dovey. F the, the fairest problem is Burhan wants to finish the period, uh, the transitional period, and people should sit down and discuss the feasibility of that. The second issue, uh, we, we, and, and that's always in, in the back uh, of the minds of the uh, military officers, is the whole, the, the, the lethal attack that was uh, uh, that was attempted against the protesters in the sit-in. Uh, the officers, they know that unless they are given impunity, I don't think that even at the end of the transitional period, they are going to give up power to the civilians. So, okay. Uh, Hajjad Kuka, also in Khartoum. Democracy is a living thing. Seems to me, from what you three gentlemen have been saying, democracy is not alive and well. It seems to be frozen. The World Bank, a couple of days ago, saying the economy is trending in the right direction because inflation has come down to 388%, which is an astonishing percentage figure. There are so many variables in the country and in the broader region. Is there a chance here that the country is actually at a tipping point and it could yet head back to the bad old days of the 1990s? Okay, um, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we're we're back there. Uh, I feel uh, right now we reached a point in Sudan where going back to war is is an up, uphill battle. It's going to be really hard to go back to war. Uh, the rebel groups that you're talking about, uh, the the minister of economy is one of the people with Erdogan who are trying to ask get the military to rule and whatnot. So the fight is political. The fight moved away. Even today, like if you go look at the Sitan, a lot of them are rebel soldiers. So so the idea, the, the way people are fighting is different. I hope that we never go back to war. Uh, I, right now, I don't think there's a threat to go back to war. People are not threatening to go back to war. Really, right now, the talk is what uh, the gentleman we were just talking about. It's exactly... The idea, would, would we go to become a fully civilian country and take over uh, running the country economically and whatnot using civilian methods and trying to solve our issues using civilian methods? And that's what the revolutionaries want. And, and yes, the economy is really bad. The economy is going in directions that Mubarak Ardul and the minister Jibril know better than anybody else because they are in the forefront of the economy. And there's, there's a lot of battle that needs to go to get there. And there, we need to finish this transitional period and get to a period where people can fight over uh, ruling the country using democratic methods. And I feel like we could get there. And we need to get over this one big hurdle, which is the symbolic gesture of giving power to civilians. That's why I think giving over the chairmanship uh, is really important symbolically because it just tells the military that now is the time where civilians will rule the country and we as the military, our job is to defend, not to rule. Okay, Mubarak Ardol, also in Khartoum. What if the people you speak to and the people you speak for are investing in the military and it's the wrong side of the argument to invest in? Because arguably there are threats inside the country, that's why what's going on in Sudan has blipped on the radar for the State Department in Washington. There are other threats outside the country. You need a competent and a capable military. The worry outside the region is that the Sudanese military is not competent and it is not capable. Let me say one thing. We don't need to involve the issue of uh, military as pretext for always to... to, to. To, to avoid discussing issues related to the civilian-civilian issues. 
The military, according to the constitutional document, they will take over the, they will hand over the government to the civilian in July 2022. This is what I heard from one of the classified uh, uh, officer in the in the in the Minister of Justice. He told us like that. And this is not issue now. The issue is reforming the ruling coalition, the FFC. It is the priority now because now the problem. Now the, we have two FFC, the group I'm representing, and there is other group of FFC. Even to hand over to the civilian, as Hajjuj is asking, we need to agree whom to be handed over to the, the, the civilian and so that they will uh, continue. Moreover, the issue is not handing over. The democratization, it, not, it will not appear here. It will appear into when we go for a serious measures of democratization, like to conduct the census and to go for voter registration and an update of voter register and go for other issues related to the law of the parties, the bill of the parties and go for the election uh, to reform, to form the election uh, commission and go forward into part, real participation of the people in the, the transitional, uh, uh, transitional legislation so that they will pass all these bills and uh, those of uh, groups of uh, revolution, they will be part of that uh, uh, legislative council to 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 pass to pass the bills and then to to to, okay. to well, start Adol, seriously. I'm going to stop you there measures. because this I just in the last point. two minutes of the program, I, I do want to go back to Walid and Hajuj, both in one in Doha, one in Khartoum. Walid, coming to you first, how much genuine desire do you detect on the part of everyone involved in this scenario to get back on track? I, I think uh, they are all they are all very genuine. I I don't want to accuse uh, any anybody's uh, 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 in, to to ill intention anybody's uh, uh, intention in this uh, scenario. I think FFC one and FFC two they need to understand that uh, any further political polarization of the society is not going to help us with uh, stabilizing the Sudan and moving towards a democracy. It's going to negatively affect uh, the, this current situation. Uh, but, but we have to be in mind that uh, some pressure ought to be exerted to make the civilian government more accountable to the Sudanese people. If you think of the liberal economic policies adopted by Hamdouk's government, I mean, it, it just went exactly against what the Revolutionary Front uh, uh, has been uh, calling for. Uh, they, uh, they bought into the fallacy of the World Bank and the IMF and adopted these liberal economic policies, which worsened the living conditions. Well, Eid, pardon me for interrupting you. The last point to Hajj George Kuka in Khartoum. Hajj George. In 30 seconds, are you optimistic that the civilian part of the administration will react in the right way to the pressure that's being directed at it just now? It just seems to be ignoring what's being said to it. Okay, so, so really I'm coming from the street. People are coming out on the 21st of October and we're pushing and what we're really pushing for is for civilian role. Right now, I think it's way more important to have civilian role than any of the rest of the other things. And I think right now, Hamdok is actually on the right track for a change. And the most important thing about democratic transition is to get to democracy. The rest will follow. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you to our guests. They were Mubarak Adol, Walid Madibo and Hajuj Kuka. And thank you too for watching. You can see the programme again anytime via the website aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Peter Dobby and the team here in Doha, thanks for watching. We will see you very soon for the moment. Bye-bye.